<clears throat> Fred, I'm so I'm so into this conversation that we're having about pizza in the chat that I forgot to start the live stream. <laughs> I kind of forgot that that's what we were here for. <laughs> Alright. So, if I am eating pizza, as you can probably hear, um, I've only got like two bites left of it though, so you won't have to suffer me eating for too long. Um, <laughs> it's a fascinating conversation we're having about pizzas. Um, <laughs> uh, the English breakfast pizza doesn't sound too bad to you, does it really? I mean, I'm, I've never been keen on the idea myself, personally. I mean, I love an English breakfast, don't get me wrong, but I don't think putting it on a pizza is the best thing in the world. <laughs> and pineapple on pizza is also called Hawaiian pizza over here, but I did not know it was invented in Chicago. I assumed it was invented in, you know, Hawaii, but, you know, apparently not. Okay, I just need to finish, like, the last two bites. And then we can get started. Are beans a traditional pizza topping? Like beans? Like baked beans? Like a tin of beans? Really? I'm not convinced. Mm, hang on. I'm going to finish chewing in a minute and I'm going to get rid of my plate. <laughs> it's just me and you at the minute, I think. So, you know, we're fine. Just need to take a sip of my chocolate milk. you know that this chocolate milk has source of calcium written on the bottle so you know that must mean that it's good for me <laughs> well you love it when they write stuff like that on stuff that's really bad for you to make you think it's good for you it's like when they have all of those horrible sugary cereals that they have for kids like coca pops and stuff like that and they write vitamins across the top as though that somehow makes it healthy <laughs> always makes me laugh that <laughs> um yeah Right, okay, so, I'm a little bit ill. I'm not like massively ill, but I'm a little bit ill, which is why I've had pizza. I've got pom bear crisps. So, if you hear me crunching throughout the live stream, that's probably it. And I've got chocolate milk. Because I think that those things are good for me when I'm ill and will make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> So, <clears throat> if I switch to the actual game, there we go. Welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. Um, we are at camp. Last time, we went and did Haven. Um, sorry, my laptop has just sprung up a Windows security thing across the chat, so I can't see what Fred's saying. <laughs> God's sake, man. There we go. Um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, we went to Haven. Uh, we got the urn. Now, I was about to say, we'll go and do um, Soldier's Peak this time, because that's what I've put on the title. <laughs> um, and since I put it on the title, we'd better go and do it, hadn't we? Um, however, um, we've got the urn of Sacred Ashes, so we should probably go and, like... Give it to, you know, Eamon, because that's kind of what we were doing it for. I sort of forgot about that bit. Um, we should probably go and do that, shouldn't we? I was just thinking we'll have a bit more of a kind of laid back live stream. Uh, you know, as opposed to all my other ones, which are so intense. <laughs> um, just, you know, because last time we went, did we did like a whole main mission last time. We might want to dial it back a little bit. We don't want to, you know, get ahead of ourselves. And I am a little bit ill. My, my throat might give out at some point. Um, yeah, so... I was thinking Soldier's Peak, because it's a nice little one. And I was thinking we might do some side quests. But we had better probably go and give the uh, the the urn of... Well, not the urn, but the pinch of ashes that we took to Eamon. Because he's kind of dying, and that's kind of like why we needed them. And I was sort of forgetting about that. However, before we do that, we might just take a turn around the camp. Um, have a few... Have a little chat with people. You know, gives all of my millions of viewers a chance to turn up. <laughs> 
There are millions of them. They just only turn up in tens at a time. <laughs> but I'm convinced there are millions. Convinced. Uh, right, yeah. We'll have a little chat with a few people. Um... Uh, you may need to beg off for real life work today, Frank. Well, tough. You're not allowed. I don't give you permission to do that. For heaven's sake, you need to get your priorities straight. <laughs> Honestly, picking work over this. Dear me, what's wrong with you? All right, we'll have a chat with Morgan. I await your command. She'll wait to my command because she likes me. I'd like to ask you something. Never click the I'd like to discuss something personal unless you're doing romances. Or you want rid of them. Those are the only two things. If, if you if you do the I'd like to discuss something personal it's either you're trying to romance them or you're trying to kick them out of the party it's one of the two so just don't click on it unless you're doing either of them so um, full of questions are you <laughs> yes I am is the sound a bit loud it sounds a bit loud to me turn it down a little bit not too much because I want you to be able to hear what you're saying um, um have you ever been hunted by the chantry that's a good one my mother has been haunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel sorry for the Templars. They came with as much swagger and arrogance as they did self-righteousness. Pity them if you wish, for they held none for us. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait. <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Okay. <clears throat> so. Um... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Flippeth used to his bait. It was a game, and I a young girl. If I didn't get to play, I would have been very upset. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere, and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, do you still think it was fun? I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, it is this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? No, I do not. Also, I'm trying to eat these crisps really quietly, but it's very hard because they're crisps. <laughs> um, I have no opinion on the matter. Absolutely, there are worse things than death. That's a pathetic justification. You're probably right. I can't just say, yeah, actually, I agree with you. I have to just say, you're probably right. Um, I mean, Dora's going to agree with that, right? Dora's going to be like, yeah, you have to survive before anything else. So yeah, we'll have to go, you probably right. <laughs> an enlightened view, or at least an agreeable one. Enough of this talk, let us return to the task at hand. Alright. Oh, she disapproved, I wonder what she disapproved of. Who knows? Um. Okay. I can't remember if I sorted my inventory out. I don't think I did. Um, who should we have a chat with? Have a chat with Liliana, see if we've opened up any more conversations with her. Hello dear. Mm-hmm. Yes? What's on your mind? Oh, we've got lots of lots lots of options. Uh why did you decide to come to Ferald and you were a travelling minstrel? Hello, Welsh friend! Um I've heard that in all late minstrels are often spies. That's the one to unlock a quest, isn't it? I think, maybe. We'll go with that one. Why did you hear this? Uh who cares, is it true or not? I don't remember someone told me a long time ago I read it in a history book. I don't know where Dora would have heard this. Let's just say I don't remember. Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are are what we call bards. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, what's the difference? Many use the two words minstrel and bard interchangeably. But to do so in all eight would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. 
Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. If you can hear crashing going on in the background, it's the cats because I've kept them in tonight and they're not happy. <laughs> they're going fucking mental, running around the place. Right, um... <clears throat> Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, what sort of patron? Nobles mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they could not do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. Okay. Um, I knew it! You're not just some innocent sister! Well, you sent you to spy on me? I mean, <laughs> that's a bit presumptuous considering that she met me like before I was particularly famous and I'm still not that famous. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really want to go the- I knew it! <laughs> I have revealed too much it seems, but it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. Okay, why are we living as a closest sister? I'd never leave it, sounds too exciting. So that's why you learned to fight like that. Uh, yeah, why were you living as a cloistered sister? I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the maker brought me here. Oh, okay. That's the end of that. <laughs> in all I the high border is trashy as Hollywood slugs, probably. <laughs> I find the whole Hollywood celebrity culture quite fascinating, in a weird sort of way. Um, but it's very difficult, difficult, different from like our celebrity culture over here. They're definitely not, celebrities are definitely not put on quite as much of a pedestal. They're just sort of like, you know, celebrities. Whereas, you know, in Hollywood it seems to be. <laughs> I watched a documentary, what documentary did I watch? It was about Hollywood. I can't remember now, but I remember finding it quite peculiar. Um, but in a sort of intriguing kind of way. Um, who should we talk to? Who should, I feel like we haven't talked to Alistair in a while. We've been neglecting him, bless him. Hello, Alistair. What do you need? Uh, see what we can ask him. Ask away. Uh, do, 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 um... Hmm. Why have you remained a Templar? Why have you remained a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. Uh, <laughs> if I can say, I don't think I've ever seen you wearing it while he's literally stood in front of me wearing it. Um, uh, yeah, I thought uh, Templars wore heavy plate mostly. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, um, yeah, so you've had a lot of pillow fights, I take it. On confession day, we could go all night. Being a Templar isn't all about chasing men in skirts and hiding behind priests, you know. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. Um, um, make something up more exciting. I've never picked that option, so I don't actually know what he says if I do that. You know, I like the way you think. But I guess if you're really curious, there's no harm in obliging. I have a couple of interesting looking molds I can show you later, too. The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, what did you enjoy about it? The education, mostly, but also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. Never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? Hmm. 
Um, not anymore. Or tomorrow is my home. I miss it. I don't think she misses it. I guess my home is with the Grey Wardens. With you. That's a flirty option. Let's not go that. Home is wherever camp is. We're travellers now. Um, hmm. Let's go not anymore, no. We won't always be travelling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. But I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good. Either way. Can you hear me crunching, Welsh friend? <laughs> no, it's not Maltesers this time. It's Pom Bear Crisps. That's what I'm eating. But it is a share size pack again. <laughs> and I've already had pizza and I'm drinking chocolate milk. I'm a little bit ill, so I'm comfort eating. All right, okay. <laughs> That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Everybody knows that ill calories don't count. <laughs> right, okay. Um, that's assuming we can survive. They can be rebuilt. You can always keep traveling. That's not the time to think about it. Um, they can be rebuilt, man. You're being too much of like a a a, a um catastrophist. I suppose you're right. We create new great wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. Okay. I approved. He likes me, guys. He likes me. What's his actual approval? Ah, yeah, we're kind of midway. Right. I should probably talk to Zev, shouldn't I? Because we're like a decent way through the game and I haven't even started on this bloody romance yet. So let's see if we can woo the uh, the handsome elf. <laughs> I think that means he likes me. Um, yeah, you want to answer some questions? All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. Yeah, we're definitely on the romance path. Right, okay. What a stage to become an assassin. Do you actually enjoy being an assassin? Yeah, do you enjoy being an assassin? And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antigua. You're respected, you're feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? Um, no, no, I, I mean, you know, I was like a basically muscle for hire, so I suppose I probably agree. I often find myself the instrument of fate, ending these lives of one necessity or another. I console myself with the notion that most of them had it coming. As far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed. The pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. I take no pleasure in killing, I enjoy violence. <laughs> That's a bit sick, I don't you mean? <laughs> I mean, come on, we're playing as Dora. We have to say that we enjoy violence, surely. <laughs> you enjoy getting the blood flowing, whether it is yours or others? Yes, I know that I. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. Having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules. Oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Handsome elf like you, I can think of a few things. Why not? You can do whatever you like. Do you have any other skills? No, I suppose not. Yeah, handsome elf like you! <laughs> I mean professionally. Or maybe you mean professionally as well. Perhaps you intend to peddle my services to bored, Ferelden noble noblewomen. It is an interesting thought, but I've always removed my clothes strictly on an amateur basis. A talented amateur, of course, but an amateur nonetheless. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. Okay, ooh, we got plus six for that. He likes being flirted with, does Um, Win, Wynne, do you have a chat with Wynne? What's on your mind? Oh my god, she's not going to immediately start lecturing me about my, you know place in the Grey Wardens or whatever. Why did the spirit choose to help you? I was just thinking about being a Grey Warden. I'll ask you something about the circle. Yeah, why did the spirit choose to help you? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams because I knew they were there. Um, I've never experienced that before. I mean, Dora doesn't dream, does she? Um, hmm. 
Can we say I've never experienced that before? I mean, that would be the most logical thing to say, but then we can say, what about demons? No, I'd say I've never experienced that before, because that's fair enough, because Dora, like, doesn't dream at all. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. Creepy. She was an evil to spirit. Watch people like that. I'm gonna. <laughs> she was saying creepy. That's a Dora thing to say, right? Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me and was guarding me, for want of a better word. Okay. Well, aren't you special? <laughs> um, you mean it protected you? <clears throat> there were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles. Ostagar being one of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also your fight with Petra's demon. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance. And I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. Um... Yes, fighting dogs. Oh. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden and help prepare her for the task that is yet before her. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger wagging. Okay. <laughs> You're joking, right? Because that's disturbing. <laughs> kind of want to go with that one. Joking? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see when the time comes, won't we? I mean, to be fair, so long as, like, the rest of the party don't also die, you will literally stand up again after dying. Like, because that's just how it works. <laughs> we all have to die for any of us to, like, you know, actually die. Um... I think that'll do us for now. Right, we'll sort our inventory out and then we'll head to Redcliffe and we'll give the ashes to all Eamon and then we'll do Soldier Speed. Uh, um, uh, right, okay, so. Oh god, we've got a lot of shite, haven't we? <laughs> um, uh, I don't think. Dora's gonna need anything. And that's plus one constitution and plus fifty percent healing effects received. But I think plus two constitution is better than that. Uh, spell power I don't need. Those are just silver rings. Okay, okay. We'll have a go through everybody else. Um. Hmm. Do we have anything for majors? Do we? we've got spell weaver, which is for arcane warrior. I don't know if I'm going to make anybody an Arcane Warrior. <clears throat> I've never really properly fought with Arcane Warrior, to be honest. So... Yeah, I don't completely understand how it works. <clears throat> I do apologise, I have a very dicky throat. Um... <laughs> I... I think that his Templar armor is still like the best we've got at the minute, especially as it's like a complete set. Um, I don't think we have any weapons he can use really. Nothing better than what he's got anyway. Sorry, I'm just going quiet, don't mind me. Hmm. Her uh, necklace is called Seeker's Circle. Did she come with that? I can't 
can't remember. It's just that's a bit interesting. Um. <laughs> Sorry, Fred's just doing his coach bit from the sidelines, shouting things at me like, sell the silver rings! Yeah, all right, Fred. I'll sell the silver rings, don't worry. <laughs> Major's eye will be good when she can actually uh, get it. Actually, she might need a level up. Does she need a level up? She does need a level up. Let's see if we can get her dexterity's maybe not going to go up that much. We've got a couple in cunning. And, oh god, I don't know. Combat tactics, that's a good one. We'll get more, um, yes, tactic slots. And get those two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, 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 okay. Still can't equip it. What did it need? 34, right? Well, not be far off. Uh, actually, you can have some of Andraste's arrows because why not? Sten won't bother with because he's Sten. Uh, Sephiroth could have reflection. Why not? Um, I went to myself. There we go. Okie dokie. So, sell all my shit. We don't have any gifts to give people. I'm sure we did. Yeah, of course we do. Of course we do, ma'am. Uh, Gold Demon Pendant. I think that's for Morgan, right? Well, she's getting it, so hopefully it's for her. Yeah, it's for her. You have my back. Uh, win, you can have a book, because you like shit like that. Alistair, you can have a stone warrior statuette. And... Wow. Hmm. Leliana. We still haven't had the Andraste's Grace conversation, have we? So it would be weird to give that to her. I don't know who the locket is for. It must be for Morrigan, surely. We don't have any paintings for Sten, sadly. Zeverin, you can have a silver bar. Because I, I love you that much. Thanks. Have we had the conversation about the leather boots? I can't remember. I know we've had the conversation about the... The, the smell of leather and how we lived above a leather, you know, place. Um... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the chat. <laughs> I kind of like you out having you there shouting things at me, Fred. <laughs> um, yeah, have we had the conversation about the boots? I can't remember. Yeah, we've had the conversation about the, the leather. He lived above a leather place or something like that, and the smell of leather makes him think of home. Uh, do the boots get mentioned in the same conversation as that, or is it a different conversation? I mean, I know you don't need to have had the conversation to give him the boots, but... It, I don't know, I just think it goes better if you have. Uh, the conversation about leather doesn't relate to gloves. The, the, the conversation about the gloves is about, um... Uh, do 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 do... His, his mother's gloves, he had some Dalish gloves that his mother gave him and they got stolen from him. I think that's what that one is. But the conversation about the boots is he was going to buy some before he came to Ferelden, but he didn't. Because he thought that he would be able to buy them when he returned. Um, which obviously he couldn't. Um, I can't remember what conversation was. Should we just give them to him? We'll just give them to him. Mm, that smell. This is Antiven leather, isn't it? I would know that anywhere. <laughs> I don't know how you found it, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> what are you waiting for? Try them on. No need to get teary-eyed. You're quite welcome. What are you waiting for? Try them on. But I'm not finished admiring them yet. Can you smell that? Like rotting flesh. Just like back in Antiva City. Now, if only you could find me a prostitute or two. Full of fish chowder and a corrupt politician. I'd really feel like I was home. 
And they feed as well. Marvelous. Okay. Oh, plus 15. -y. Oh, God. I've got him, haven't I? I've got him hook, line, and sinker, man. I'm going to give the locket to Morrigan because I feel like it must be hers. So, you know, cross your fingers, everybody. Yes, it's hers. Good. Um, all the alcohol is for Ogram. <laughs> yeah, you were wrong, Fred. Yeah, you were. See, you don't know everything. <laughs> I'm joking. I love you, Fred. I do. Right. <clears throat> um, okay, I love how we're just like carrying all this alcohol around with us. You know, on the off chance that at some point we'll recruit a dwarf who wants it all. <laughs> right, we'll sell all of our shit. If there's anything I can do for you, um, please tell me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected and with your discount. <laughs> no wrong, Fred, you were just quoting alternate facts. <laughs> Are you in politics, Welsh friend? <laughs> um, right. Sell all the shit. Um, um, should we sp sell Spellweaver or should we hold on to it? Cause I know some people like to make win an Arcane Warrior, but you know what? I just don't feel like doing Arcane Warriors in this particular playthrough. I'll keep Major's Eye because that'll be good when Lel can actually equip it. We'll get rid of some of these fire arrows because for fuck's sake we don't need all of them. And some of the ice arrows as well. And um, don't cry, Fred. Don't put cryy faces in the chat. You make me sad. I didn't mean it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, sell all of this shit. I don't think we need any of it. Ooh, we've got ancient elven gloves. Keep them. Keep the boots of diligence. Uh, everything else can probably go. Armor of diligence. We'll keep heavy chainmail silver, right? <laughs> no, we'll get rid of that. And get rid of all of these. We'll sell the silver rings. Good shout there, Fred. But uh, we won't need the belt for Magister's sword. Their uh, lords. Life drink is a blood mage thing, so we'll sell that. Um. Um. Trade manifest. We'll sell silver chalice. Private document. Garnet. Rock salve. Hmm, I might want to sell some of this shit because our, um... Sell them a barry crunch. I don't tend to use it even when I've got the dog with me. I'll just get rid of it. Um... Yeah, the inventory's like a bit full. Um... Get rid of the nature salve. Get rid of the spirit bomb. I like to keep some of them just like, you know, in case. But. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably still the bedroom key. I don't think I'm going to need that. We'll keep Goldworm's horn. We'll keep Drake skills. Hokey cokey. Right. So we head to Redcliffe and wake up uh, Eamon. 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 Whatever. Um. Uh, who should we take with what? <clears throat> well, we need Alistair. Yeah. We'll take the doggy. Because why not? And we'll take, I don't know, Morrigan. She can stand by and would look threatening. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'll head to Redcliffe. And we'll get attacked on the way there, because why not? Oh, we're not getting attacked, it's just what's-his-name, that's alright. Hello, what's-his-name? Have coin, stranger? The doors are marked closed off, old Tegrity, discount. Fine weapon and arms, dwarven man. Okay, what's going on in Ozumar? It's my home! There's two things I'm doing. Travel or trade. Understand? Okay, fine. <laughs> Is this kind of, I thought he might. Uh, I thought he might tell a dwarf, um, but he doesn't. Uh, okay. What you got? You got painting of the rebel queen. We'll have that. Blue satin shoes. We'll have that. Silver sword of mercy. We will have. Temperament. Not very good. Amulet of printers. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know 
not much worth anything, does he, really? Thought he might at least have a backpack or something, but no. That's all right, we've got a few gifts off him anyway. We'll take this elf route, because why not? We'll head on our merry way. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm really trying to clear my throat as little as possible, but bloody hell. <clears throat> right. We should have gone to the castle, not the actual village, shouldn't we? That... <laughs> Hang on, should we, should we level up Alistair first before we do anything? You can have your level up. Uh, we'll give you some combat tactics. And mental fortress. The temper is learned to focus on duty, gaining a large bonus to mental resistance. That sounds good. We'll have that. Why not? Because uh, he's nearly full up on that anyway. Now, the funny thing about Alistair is, now, I don't know whether they had like completely um, sort of figured out all the logistics about Templars and Lyrium and Mages and all that kind of stuff while they were, you know, um, developing the first game and all of that. But the fact that Alistair still has Templar abilities surely means that he has to be actively taking Lyrium. Right, he must be. He must be taking Lyrium to still have Templar abilities. So he's a Lyrium addict, but he's outside the circle. So we, we must be supplying him with Lyrium somehow. Grey Waldens must have been supplying him with Lyrium. But like the Lyrium trade is kind of like, you know, quite illegal sort of outside the circle, isn't it? Maybe something like that, I don't know. <clears throat> it's just an interesting thing. And also like, if you pick Templar as a specialization for your character, your character must then become a Lyrium addict, surely. <laughs> Like, have to, to be able to access the abilities. Which I think is weird. But I sort of worked that into the story ones when I was playing Dragon Age 2. And I had Hawk get the Templar specialisation. But I sort of made up a story that he'd started using Lyrium when they went into the Deep Roads. To, like, you know, give him a bit of an edge um, over all of the nasty things that you find down there. But then it turned into a Lyrium addiction. So his specialization was actually like, a, was actually like, you know, a, a subplot that Hawk had this Lyrium addiction and that Varric was helping him to get Lyrium and stuff like that to, for, to, uh, to sustain his Lyrium addiction. And it was this whole kind of dark backstory that was meant to be going on in the back, back of the game. Yeah. That's the kind of shit that I do when I'm playing uh, video games. Um, okay. Um. Right, so, yeah, let's go to the actual castle. That's where we need to be. There we go. <clears throat> I can imagine if we got attacked between the village and the castle. I'm sure I've had that happen before. I'm sure I have. Um, maybe not. I don't know if it actually can happen, but I'm sure it's happened. Maybe. Uh, I, actually, we never went back to Haven to find that... Um, Secret graveyard bit. Common misconception was still on the spell, did we? Hmm. Might do that at some point. Uh. Uh, doesn't Alistair have a line to the effect that the Chantry says Templars need living, but they really don't? I think he does have a line like that as well. Um. Maybe. But then I think it was kind of like um, changed in later games. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if the Chantry just gets them hooked on Lyrium because they can't. Um, but the thing is, if if their abilities don't go, like their abilities are very similar to magic, so like if it doesn't come from Lyrium, where would it come from? Why? How would they be able to do that stuff? I mean, they can literally like dispel an area of magic. Like, that's kind of a magical ability. In fact, a lot of their abilities are similar to major abilities. So, like, it must have some connection to Lyrium. Surely. But then Cassandra's abilities, like the Seeker abilities, come from being made tranquil and then being cured. That's where they get their abilities from. So... I don't know. Maybe they just have to undergo some kind of ritual with lyrium or something like that but then they don't actually need to keep taking the lyrium but the chantry just tells them they need to keep taking it hmm who knows hello tegan you return 
but you have news. No, I was just popping in to say hello. <laughs> uh, yes, I found the urn. You have. Wonderful. Step up door at once, hit them inside, and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. Uh huh. has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it. This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, I know you did what you had to. I grieve for my son, but I believe that had you not acted as you did, it might have been far worse. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? He takes that a lot better than Alistair did, didn't he? <laughs> um, uh, if you like, I won't object. Then allow me to declare you and those traveling with you champions. Of Redcliffe, you will always be a welcome guest within these halls. And for you, Warden, a shield of the same make as those that have been given to our finest knights. Pray, I don't fight with a shield. <laughs> you know, I was kind of hoping for like gold or something. Um. Um. Yes. Okay. Let's let's be polite and say thank you. We should speak of Logan, brother. There is no telling what he will do once he learns of your recovery. Logan instigates a civil war, even though the Darkspawn are not very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man, one who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him, Loghain must be stopped. What's more? We can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. I'm trying to crunch these crisps as quietly as possible to not like ruin the ambiance of the cutscene, but I don't know how much I'm succeeding. Um, okay. I was looking forward to meeting him on the battlefield. What are you proposing? We, this is in your hands now. You can unite the nobility against low gain. Um, yeah, I was looking forward to meeting him on the battlefield. I like stabbing people. You would not walk away from that meeting unscathed. The Darkspawn slaughtered Caelan's forces, not Logan's. He has strength we cannot hope to match. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance of fighting the Darkspawn. <laughs> You'd have preferred a box of chocolates, would you, Welsh friend? <laughs> Thank you for saving my village. Now here, enjoy this milk tree. <laughs> <laughs> have a box of Thorntons. Um, um, <laughs> okay. So giving up, uh, then everything I've done is so nothing. Logan must capitulate then once everybody does. Yeah, Logan must capitulate. I agree. Logan will pay for his heinous crimes, but our armies must be reserved for the Darkspawn, not for each other. I will spread word of Logan's treachery, both here and against the king. But it will be but a claim made without proof. Those claims will give Logain's allies pause. But we must combine it with a challenge Logain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Logain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative. But the unthinkable has occurred. 
Okay, you intend to put Alistair forward as king. Alistair would be a terrible king. I think it's a great idea. No, do you know what? Alistair would be a terrible king. Hey, Egan <laughs> and I have a claim through marriage that we would seem opportunists no better than Bogang. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I would have to support him for the sake of Ferelden. Is that what you want? I... but I... No, my I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet. A gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denaran. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing. Why? I'm literally a nobody. Like, how it? I mean, I know I, I found the Earth's sacred ashes and all that shit, but come on. <laughs> you met me like five minutes ago. Okay, I say we proceed with your plan. My blessing, why do you need my blessing? Wouldn't it be easier to simply kill Logain? What's stopping Logain from just attacking Redcliffe? <clears throat> Um, do you think this lands the idea will work? What are my options? Yeah, why do you want my blessing? None of this would be possible without you. You led Alistair here. You saved my life with the urn of sacred ashes. It's your lead I follow. I am a credible enough figure in this nation to call the lands meet, but I hold no illusions that I could face Logate without you. Surely you see that. No, not really, but all right. Um, um... Uh, so we proceed with your plan. Wouldn't be easy to simply kill the ghost. <laughs> okay, let's go for like Dora Bella's mindset. <laughs> um, yeah, Dora Bella would be like, "Why don't we just kill the ghost?" I'm not sure that would help our cause. We would become the criminals, and our accusations would become excuses. Furthermore, I'm not even certain where Logan might be. Uh, what if we defeat him in battle? Yeah, what if we defeat him? I'm going to keep pushing this. Like, Dora really just wants to stab him. Unless we convince some of Logan's allies to abandon him, that's not likely to happen. Our army is not large enough. As a Grey Warden, you may gather allies to you, but we need those forces to face the Darkspawn, not to battle against our own. Oh, all right then if you want to be all sensible about it fine okay so we proceed with your plan very well i will send out the word but before we proceed i believe there is the matter of the mage my son's tutor he still lives i understand he does he is in the dungeon brother have him brought here tegan i wish to see him jowan what you have done is not in question you tried to assassinate and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord, other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I've done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? Um, he's cooperated willingly, though he has little choice. He seems earnest in his desire to return. Repent? No, I have nothing to add. No, I'm just gonna... No, I've got nothing to add, I don't think. Then there is nothing more to say. Jowan, I hereby sentence you to death. May the Maker show you the mercy we come on. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the landscape. It will take some time to recall my forces and organize our allies. I would prefer to wait until that is done before calling the landscape. In the meantime, I suggest you pursue the remainder of the Grey Warden treaties. We will need all the allies we can get if we are to defeat the Darkspawn Horde. Okay, I don't get a level up, yay! Um, yeah, I'd forgot that uh, Eamon kills Jowen if you don't speak up for him. <clears throat> oh, we've got another specialization. Hmm. Hmm, what specialization goes with duelist, right? Ranger doesn't make sense story wise because she's a dwarf. Bard! Hmm. Maybe. Um. Um. 
I'm just reading the chart, don't mind me. Giving Sharon to the circle, which will almost certainly make him tranquil, is a just punishment. Isn't being tranquil worse than death? I think being tranquil would be worse than death. Especially because the few people who have come out of tranquility again talk about, like, how awful it is being tranquil. And that, like, when they're tranquil, like, they're sort of still inside, but they're kind of trapped there. And it's, like, torture for them. <laughs> It's not just that they're not feeling stuff like it appears on the surface. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just having a drink. God, my throat, dear me. Right. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, we could go bard. Let's actually, you know what? Let's look at the bonuses rather than kind of trying to work out what's best for the story. Plus two willpower, plus one cunning. Okay. Plus two dexterity. Plus 2.5 critical chance. That's better, I think. And then me and my boyfriend can, be both, can both be assassins together. That makes sense, doesn't it? Let's go assassin. I think assassin's a good one. And then... Oh, we've got two skill points. Oh, my goodness. We will go with... We're going to need survival if we want to save that Haller, aren't we, in the Dalish camp. But at the same time... Oh, we also need stealing for those stealing quests we're doing. Coercion wouldn't be a bad one so that we can, you know, get some more stuff. But then Master Combat Training. So that we can... Oh, man, too many options. All right, let's go Coercion and Stealing. Why not? And... Oh, what do we want? What do we want? Uh, Keen defence. The duelist has an uncanny knack for simply not being there when the enemy attacks. Receiving a bonus to defence. Doesn't tell me what the bonus is, though, but, you know, still. Um, uh, um, evasion. The rogue gains an almost... What's that? Pre, 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 pre natural, whatever that is. Ability to sense and avoid danger. This talent grants a one in five chance of evading physical attacks. Including being stunned or knocked down. That's good. Uh, when a target is incapacitated, the opportunistic road strikes where it hurts most, inflicting automatic backstabs and stunned or paralyzed targets. Ooh, I like evasion. Evasion seems good. We could go mark of death. Hmm. Mark of Death is basically like a non-mage hex. That's what that is. Um, or we could just get some more in the old dual weapon stuff. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I like evasion. I think we'll go with evasion. <clears throat> evasion seems good to me. <clears throat> Fucking hell, my throat. Dear me. Uh, right. So... I think. Hello, knights. Um, I don't know why I'm coming through this way. I just, you know, want to have a wander through the castle. Have a look at all the uh, bones that I left behind. <laughs> Hello, servant. Uh, sometimes it's good to have a wander through places you've already been through because you might have, you know, missed some bodies or some codex entries or something. Like, you never know. Uh, oh, and there's a quartermaster. They're in the chest, my lord. That's all there was. Okay. Are you, do you work like a quartermaster? I am a sir. Van Tegan brought me up from his estate out east to help with restoring the castle to its... Well, to a, a manageable state, anyhow. Okay. You don't you don't act as like an actual quartermaster who I can buy stuff off. Um, um, yes, what are we doing? We're going to go and do Soldier's Peak. That's what we're doing. Fucking hell. <laughs> An hour into the live stream, we're finally doing the thing that, you know, we were going to do. See? There's a chest we haven't opened. See? See? I think, actually, we left that stuff behind because our inventory was full, wasn't it? Yeah. That's why you just, you know, sometimes have a wander back through places you've already been. And you can loot things. But you missed on your first go around. <laughs> I 
It's reading the chat, don't mind me. Right, so we head back out. Who should we take to soldiers speak with us? Should we just go with the party that we've got at the minute? Do you think that would be all right? I mean, we don't have wind to cure with. Hmm. Or we could take we could take Win Morrigan and the dog. I just feel like the dog hasn't had enough eye wings. That's all. <laughs> Fred, I love how you have just gone. See, I don't always shout from the sidelines. Immediately followed by you just going, see if that's better than what the dog has on now. <laughs> right back to shouting from the sidelines again, Fred. Oh God, hello. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so you didn't get tired of the life. In a way I did, but these feelings were triggered by events which I did not tell you about. I didn't feel like talking about it then. What happened to me? Maybe it will affect us. Maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. Okay. Fascinating. Tell me more. I was framed. Betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the Bardic arts. How to enchant with words and song. To carry myself like a highborn lady. To blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. Okay. Um, so Marjolaine was a bard too? She claimed to have retired. She married a noble and inherited his wealth when he died. To many she was just a rich widow. I thought I knew her. My devotion to her blinded me to her less than noble attributes. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body. Sealed documents. Um. Okay, and you opened the mine, Marjolaine? My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries. Nevara and Antiva, among others. It was treason. <laughs> so it's just all eh? Um, Yeah, isn't that what bots do? Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated with an all eh? This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as Bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries. It takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. Most countries take a harsh view of such things, like regardless of their uh, <clears throat> how many wars they've been in. Um, yeah, most countries don't appreciate treason. Um, yeah, should we just pick that one? I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. Okay. Um, yeah, who's they? The Orlesian guards. They captured me. It did terrible to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured. And at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. Okay. Um, yeah, how did you get out? The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. Uh, okay, and so you came to load the ring. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> Let's just say thank you for trusting me with this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Okay, my darling. There we go. That's, see, we're, we're all friends now. Um, right. So, first things first. Uh, <laughs> um, 30% electricity resistance versus 30 physical resistance. Ooh, I think physical resistance is better. Um, uh, you can have a Lambo, though. No, there you go. <laughs> uh, <coughs> if there's anything I can do for you, and we'll sell a few bits of sure stuff that we've got, and then we'll head to Soldier's Peak. Because why not? Uh, do, 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 do. Got some gifts to give people as well, haven't we? You can have that. Red Cliff Elite Shield. We'll keep that, because it's quite decent. What else did we get? I don't know what else we got. Yeah, it's probably fine. We'll uh, dish out those gifts that we got as well. So, Silver Sword of Mercy, I think it's Liliana. Oh, how dear of you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Uh, the shoes are also Liliana, but wait a minute. Give that to Stead. Unexpected. Thank you. Uh, 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 how do I stop the dialogue like that? I hit escape. That's how I stop the dialogue. <laughs> um, I think it's escape. Is it escape? Or do you click? I think it's escape. Hang on, let's try it. I just do it automatically. Nothing about it. Yeah, it's escape. And then if you like, click. Yeah, yeah, it's escape. Uh, right. Uh, what was I doing? Gifts. I need to give those shoes to Liliana. Do 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 do, cause she likes shoes. Have some shoes. Oh, there we go. Dear. I had it in my head that that one triggered a cutscene, but it doesn't. Um. Okay. Right. So, go and do Soldier's Peak. Can I get uh, any new runes to apply? That is an excellent flipping question, Fred. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I'm so pleased I've got you here. Um. Do enchantment, enchantment, enchanting. Okay. Oh, we've got expert paralyze. Oh, that's that's grandmaster paralyze. But Alistair can have expert paralyze, and he can have. Hmm. Do we want to give him journeyman lightning, which gives him extra damage, or do we give him journeyman paralyze, so he's got even better chance to paralyze? Because paralysis is really good. But no, I think we'll give him lightning because then that just gives it a bit extra. Um, yes, damage. Uh, what have I got? Journeyman paralyze. Journeyman lightning. And then... And then Sev, he can have paralyze and he can have slow as well. You know, just on the off chance I might ever decide to bring him with me. <laughs> oh my god, we're up to four viewers, bloody hell. <laughs> wow, it's not often it gets up to that many. I feel like the first few live streams are actually more popular <laughs> than, like, we were getting up to, like, oh, sometimes seven or eight people then. And then it just kind of, you know, petered off as people realised, wow, she's fucking mental. <laughs> That's alright. Um... <laughs> um, <laughs> get to listen to me go off on random tangents and, and, and watch Welsh friend and Fred just have arguments in the chat <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it's like? It's like my parents are watching or something. <laughs> I've got Fred yelling, uh, yelling advice at me and Welsh friend being like, look, you don't have to yell advice at her all the time. <laughs> That's what it's like. I feel like I've got an internet mum and dad. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Um, what am I doing? Right. Yes. We're going to Soldier's Peak. Right. Who should we take Soldier's Peak with her? Oh, 
There's a question. We take Wayne with her. Yes. Because she can be our healy person. And then I kind of always need Wayne and Morrigan. That's the trouble because Morrigan's like, Morrigan deals all the damage, but Wayne keeps everybody alive. But then after that, it sort of comes down to either Alistair, Doggy, or Shale. Don't know who I want. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Timothy's here. Hello, Timothy. We missed you on Saturday. You weren't there, were you? Um, unless you were lurking, which is fair enough. Um, mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, taking Alistair with her would make more sense, wouldn't it? Because he's a Grey Warden and, you know, it's a kind of Grey Warden sort of mission. I haven't taken the doggy much. Hmm. Um. 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 I don't know. I'm bad at making decisions. I'll we'll take Alistair. We'll take Alistair. We'll take the dream team. Why not? Head on up to Soldier's Peak. Might have to take a break in a second to go and get another drink because I've run out of chocolate milk. <laughs> My throat is not in a good fettle today, so yeah. Here we are. Soldier's Peak. Maker's breath. Look at the size of her. What a fortress. I told you the map would get us through the tunnels. Why two majors, asks Fred. I always like to take two majors um, in Origins. That's just the way I prefer to play the party. I just, I just think it's better with two majors in Morrigan. In Morrigan. In Morrigan's. In Origins. Um, uh, yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just like, because you've always got one who's like a big hitter, like Morrigan, and then Wynne is more kind of a healy person who like, keeps everybody alive. Um, and I just think it, it just works better. But in, like, Inquisition, for example, I prefer to have two warriors, because, but the mages aren't really much use in Inquisition, because you can't be a healy mage, because mages can't heal people. So, like, you know, mages are just sort of a bit superfluous, to be honest, but having two warriors is really good, because it, like, you know... But anyway, yes, I just I just think two mages works best. Um, I think they work best in conjunction with each other as well. Like, you can have one freeze people and the other one shatter them with a stone fist and stuff like that. You know, I just think they, they work in a good combination. Um, yes, just admit it, you were lost a couple of times. I wasn't lost, it's just that the map got soggy. Bah, we're here. So, I'll follow you about from a distance. This place has the stench of death. I expect there's trouble up ahead. Okay. Looks like it's seen better days. Better centuries. Once the wardens flourished, their ranks full, their caliber certain. Now they even accept people like you, Alistair. Hey. <laughs> okay, we'll take a quick break. Take a very, very, very quick break. Uh, where's me thing? Put me poor screen on. And then put me... Well, it's going to say kitten break, but it's not. It's more a getting juice break. I will be back in about five minutes. <sighs> Just need to go and, you know, um, refill me supplies. Hang on. I'll be back.
Right, I am back. I, uh, as soon as she heard me moving about, the cat got up. She came running in, so I picked her up. Gave her a cuddle and everything. <laughs> then I went to put her down on the sofa and she kind of slipped out of my arms. <laughs> and, like, did a kind of somersault in mid-air and landed on her back on the sofa. It was quite cute. <laughs> it was quite cute. Anyway... Um, what way round do these bloody headphones go on? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, what? I'm confused. That's the right side. Wait, have I been wearing my headphones the wrong way around this whole time? I think I have. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Um, yes, good. I've got my bottle of water. Hang on. For a minute there, I thought I had left my bottle of water in the other room. God, my desk has got so much bloody crap on it. I'm going to put the crisps away because I've eaten too many of them and I feel sick. And if I leave them there, I'll just keep eating them. I'll put them away, shall we? Put them away. Put them away. In there. There we go. Okay, dokey. Right. <clears throat> if we... Go back to that. Right, here we are. Soldier's Peak. Um... <sighs> oh, dear. Bloody hell. That's a nice uh, image of Morrigan's back that we've got there. We? I'm a sucker for a nice back, you know. I like a nice back. Backs don't get talked about enough when people talk about body parts that I like to talk about, you know, legs and hips and things. Ah, I like a nice back. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, level Alistair up. Oh, what should we give him? What should we give him? Let's give him shield mastery. He's a master with the old shield as Alistair. Actually, I was going to check to see if uh, that's better than the one he's got on. Uh, six defense and 25 stamina. Or one willpower, three defense, 15% electricity resistance and two attack. Um, I don't know. You would think that Eamon's shield would be better than just your standard Redcliffe knight shield. But I feel like the Redcliffe knight shield might be better. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's put that one on. Um. Uh. You only finished the game twice, and both times Alistair died, so I didn't want to do Awakening. Didn't know how to stop him from flinging himself at the dragon. Well, there's two answers to that, Welsh friend. Firstly, when Alistair decides to fling himself at the dragon, you say, no, I'll do it, and you do it instead. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you do get that option. The second one is, um... Uh... You do the, uh... The, the dark ritual with Morrigan, and then nobody else to die. That's how you do it. That's kind of it, really. Um, which we will do on this playthrough. We'll definitely do the dog ritual, so you'll get to see it. Trouble is, you have to be, have high... Well, if you're going to do it with Alistair, you have to have high approval with him to actually get him to agree to it. But if you're playing as a male warden, you can do it yourself. Uh, if you're playing as a lady warden, you can't, because you don't have the appropriate body parts. Anyway! Um, head up here. Uh, See what's a happening. Fall back, fall back already. Taking the peak will not be easy, my lord. I gave the Waltons one chance to die with honor. Instead, they hold up like cowards. We follow the king's advice then, starve them out. But the peak has months of supplies. Then we wait. When they are too weak to lift their weapons, we will send them to their final judgment. What was that? Felt a bit woozy there. I'm not mad, am I? You saw it too. Didn't see the option. I can't remember what the option is exactly, but I know that you always have the option to kill the, the dragon yourself. Um, or the archdemon yourself. But the trouble is, if you haven't done the, um, the dark ritual, then whoever kills the archdemon dies. So you're either killing Alistair or you're killing your own character. Um... Or Loghain, if you decide to recruit Loghain. Um, but we won't be doing this, that, this... That, we won't be doing that this playthrough. But uh, we'll do it at some point. Um, we still have to get a let's go. It's like a waking dream. I had a vision to 11. Yeah, it was like a waking dream. Although Adora doesn't know what a dream is, does she? Um, 
Let's just say yes, I had a vision too. Uh, the veil is thin here, the circle tower was that way too, as if I would know anything about that. The world is full of mysteries, let's move on. Yeah, let's just move on. Yes, uh, Okie dokie. Doesn't Morrigan usually say something about the veil being thin? Or am I just imagining that? Maybe I'm just imagining that. Okay, we'll edge in a little bit because at some point we'll get attacked by corpses. Okay, um, sorry, I'm just reading the chat. That's a really good pose that we got her in there. Blimey. I might take a screenshot of that. Should I take a screenshot of that? I'm going to take a screenshot of that. I've screenshotted it. Okay. <laughs> That's cool, that, man. <laughs> That's friggin' awesome. That's an album cover. I mean, come on. <laughs> How amazing is that? <laughs> Look at us all charging it. That was the perfect place to pause there. Right, okay. Um, let's, let's, yes, let's, let's. Let's just try stabbing them. That usually works. Um, I'm going to turn the sound down just a little because I think it's too high for combat. But do tell me if it's too low. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I thought the game was going to crash for a minute there. I got a bit... Uh... Yes, okay. Morgan's mind blasted them. Let's see if we can get a bit of a cone of cold. I know Fred is going to shout grenades at me in a minute. I, 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 can, I, can, I can feel that Fred is going to shout grenades. <laughs> um, but we'll do a cone of cold first. Um, and then we can do a stone face. The thing is, when we cone of cold them, we always have the option to shatter them, you see? Um, uh, yeah, they're going down pretty easy. Okay. Uh, Liliana makes a comment if you bring her. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I'm sure I can remember somebody making a comment. Um, okay. Where am I going? I noticed that the DLCs are always prettier than the main game. That seems to be a thing. <laughs> seems to be a thing. I've just seen Fred showing it's <laughs> I think we should have a new drinking game since there hasn't been much kitten drama. I think that we should have a new drinking game that is you take a drink every time Fred says use a grenade. <laughs> I think we should have that as a drinking game. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, these stone. <laughs> uh, okay, go and click on this statue. New quest, ancient history. Uh, yes, I know there's more behind me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was just, I was educating myself for heaven's sake. Um, down here. And they don't seem to be too difficult. <clears> hmm. <throat> Um. <laughs> um, I promise I will use grenades, all right, friends. Just maybe not this precise moment is all. <laughs> cone of cold is just better, man. Um, and then once I've used cone of cold, they usually go down really quick. So then I don't need to use a grenade anymore. You know, just saying. It's not like bigger groups of enemies that um, where. Uh, Grenades are more useful, you know. Where you're getting like really swarmed. I can hear a cat! Hello, buddy! Oh, oh, oh! Where are you going? You're going on the windowsill? No, you're going on the computer. Please don't go on the computer. Hang on, I'm gonna have to get this cat off my computer. The computer is too expensive for a very heavy cat to be sitting on top of. Come here. No, 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 no. No, get off. Okay? Get your tail in. For heaven's sake. Right. She's on the windowsill. <clears throat> okay. So. Um, you know when you've eaten too much and you're just not comfortable? Now there's too much in you, you feel too kind of, you know, full. Oh, I need to like wiggle about a bit to try and make some room. <laughs> um, uh, 
<laughs> I'm reading the chat. Ooh, you give everyone one level of poison so they can go full. Hang on a minute. If you give people poison, if you give people, where is it? <laughs> nope. Yeah, if you give people poison making, does that mean they can use grenades? Even if they're not a rogue? Because I always thought it was just limited to rogues. But only rogues could use grenades. And poison and stuff. But like, if you give a warrior that, can they then throw grenades? I didn't know that. <laughs> Is that a thing? Uh... There's nothing to Pombez, how did that happen? Well, I ate an entire pizza before I started eating the Pombez. That's how that happened, Welsh friend. <laughs> That's how that happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, a whole one, yeah. Uh, I mean, not a massive one. It was only like a like a 10, 10 inch, 8 inch, whatever the smallest one is. But um, yeah, I did eat an entire pizza before I started on the Pombez crisps. And I had a whole bottle of chocolate milk, so you know. I'm ill, all right? <laughs> It's fine. I can overeat when I'm ill. It's allowed. Um, 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 okay. So, it's a bit foggy there, isn't it? <laughs> a bit foggy here. <laughs> um, uh, there's nothing over here, is there? No. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. What am I doing? I'm wandering aimlessly because I'm reading the chat at the same time. It's like it's like driving while texting. That's basically what I'm doing right now. <laughs> it's not good. Um, okay. I'll get on it. Right. So, head inside the castle. It really annoys me that once you finish this quest, you can't go back inside the castle. That's really irritating, isn't it? Uh, In here. morale is low. My spells are of no use in the battle commander. There is more to leading men than sorcery in her. I will remind them that they're wardens. Men, I won't lie to you. The situation is grim. Our forces outnumbered, our bellies empty, and our hearts are sagging. But we are wardens! Darkspawn flee when they hear our horns. Archdemons die when they taste our blades. So are we to bend knee to a mere human despot? No! I, for one, will never give up. I, for one, will never surrender just to dance on Arlen's gallows. So I propose here and now, in these hallowed halls where generations of our brethren stood vigil against darkspawn and evil, that we send a message to that fat bastard. In this sacred place, proud men, strong men, stood defiant and would rather die than submit to tyranny. So brave, even when starving, and my great-great-grandmother stood with them. Uh, she was going to make it a speech, wasn't she? Yeah. Sounds like there's greatness in your blood, King Alden. It's a tyrant. I complete the king attacked the Grey Wardens. Yeah, King Alden was a tyrant. Not much is known of King Arland. The war of succession that followed his death, now that was a piece of work. Lasted nearly a decade, and almost burned Denerim and the palace to the ground. Loads of history was lost, but maybe there's answers to that inside. But I've gabbed enough. Lead on, my friend. Okay. Right. <clears throat> uh, read the Statement of Defiance. Uh, on these grounds, virtuous men stood against a tyrant, they stood defiant and stood for freedom, and they died. Uh, signed by the Wayworn Defenders, who were besieged by King Arlen's forces. Uh, read the names of the Fallen. No, we're not going to bother reading the names of the Fallen. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. <sighs> okay. So, there's an arcane horror. Hello. Blimey. <laughs> That's a hell of a welcome, isn't it? Alright. Um, okay. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do, actually. We're going to put some poison on the blade, because we don't do that enough. And... No, 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 no. Hang on. I was going to say, we, we, yeah, we've got freezing coating, haven't we? But I might save that for the, uh, the last battle. 
because um, it gets a bit nasty in the last battle and there's quite a lot of rage demons and whatnot. And I'm assuming it'll be quite good against rage demons. Uh, but for now, we'll use. Let's use Soul Rot, why not? And we can get Morrigan to paralyze him. Um, Dora's trying to run away for reasons. Oh, you resisted by paralyze. Oh, that's not fun. What I, oh, I need, I need, I need to get corner called on those two. Corner called them. And then, ooh, somebody, oh, Morrigan's dead. What happened? Dora's been paralyzed. Oh my god, this is like fighting against me. Um, <laughs> do a group heal win nice and quick. There we go. We're all on fire. Um, okay. Okay, okay. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is just everything is fine. Everything's fine. Okay. Do a bit of a uh, stone fist against him. Get these rage demons down. It shouldn't be too hard. Just realized we've all got flaming weapons on and we're fighting rage demons. Uh, the arcane horror. We could revive Morrigan, but I don't think I'm going to bother. Um, because I think we can defeat him without her. Yay! Down he goes. Okay. Morrigan, wake up, love. You were bloody useless, weren't you? <laughs> um, you can have a lesser injury kit. God's sake, Fred. <laughs> just going to shout that at me in every battle now, aren't you? Use grenades! <laughs> 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 I, look, I don't have that many grenades, alright? I've got three. I need to use them sparingly, Fred, for God's sake. <laughs> Can't just be throwing them around willy-nilly. Um, okay, there's a note. Let's read the note. <clears throat> Sophia, I'll ru ruin, ruin, something like that. And his entire family have been slaughtered, even the children. The ruin lion is no more and the only belongs to the crown for now. Arlen believes Ruin was plotting against him. Ruin criticised the king's spending on Winter's End. That was all. It was an idle word spoken out of turn. The king goes too far. His brain is filled with madness and he clings to the crown like a drowning man clutches at snow. Uh, at a straw, even. At snow? Where did I get snow from? Sophia, I beg you, help us. If nothing is done, more will suffer. Your humble, so humble servant, Wolf. E dear. Held against the king because he was mental. Uh, like mad kings in fiction, don't they? Game of Thrones had a mad king, didn't they? And then what's her name? Danny turned out to be mad, which apparently shocked people who had only watched the <laughs> only watched the TV show. Now that was quite funny because I read the books, but I didn't watch the TV show. Well, I mean, I have now watched it, but I wasn't watching it like when it was on. I binged watched all of it after it came out. Um, I didn't. I hadn't read all the books. I think I got about like halfway through the third one before I kind of gave up on them because I, I didn't like them very much. I don't think they're that good. Um, I think the series is better, actually. But um, if you read the books, like, it's completely obvious from a, uh, about the end of book one that Danny is fucking mental. Like, she's absolutely insane. But it doesn't really come across in the show. Because the trouble is, in the show, you can only see what she's doing. You can't see what she's thinking. Whereas in a book, you can see inside her head. So you know, you know why she's doing what she's doing. You don't just see what she's doing. You, you know why she's doing it. And you can see that she's clearly mad. But in the show, you can't actually... You don't know what she's thinking, you just see what she's doing, but you don't know why she's doing what she's doing, so it doesn't come across that she's mad. Which is why everybody was surprised in the final series when she went mad. But like, in the, like if you read the books, it's pretty obvious that she's fucking mental. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, enough of that. Um, oh, that might be the first tangent we've had so far! I'm getting better! Wow, you've got a giant axe. Okay. Um... Let's uh, let's just uh, do a bit of dirty fighting on you. Uh, <laughs> that levy just wanders around in these battles, looking really lost. Um, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't reach the bad guy because my own friends are in the way. Right, everybody, attack the big bad, the uh, the commander. He's got a giant axe, and I'm a bit scared of him. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Morrigan's gonna die again. Bloody hell, Morrigan, you are really letting the side down today. Jesus. Um, Fred, if you say the word grenade, I'm unfriending you. <laughs> um, 
Um, uh, uh, right, there he goes. The rest of them should be quite easy. This was the section that when I did a I did a video on Soldier's Creek, and it was one of like my early ones. It was like the third or fourth video that I'd ever done, and um, it was in here that Leliana got a, an arrow like embedded in her chest. And I said something like, oh, you've been shot through the heart. Yes, I do see how that could be a small problem. And I thought it was really funny. <laughs> yeah, I was editing it. And it was only, it was only about like, the second or third video that I'd actually done. And I still didn't really know if I was any good at it or not. And I was watching that. I thought, you know what? That was pretty funny. You're pretty funny, Magpie. <laughs> um, um, uh, a plague from Commander Al 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 Alfar, was that? Athlar. Soldier's Peak is more than we bargained for. There is sinister magic at work here. The men are seeing things and cannot tell nightmares from reality. The fall will return to life and attack again and again. And we are assaulted by dark creatures the likes of which I have never seen. Whoever is responsible is intent on destroying us all. And the King's Army and the Grey Wardens both send help. We cannot last much longer. And presumably the people who occupied the place after they defeated the Grey Wardens. <laughs> Uh, right, okay. So, isn't Morrigan not supposed to be in the middle of the fighting? Yeah, true. <laughs> that is true. I should probably be keeping her in the back. But, you know. uh, I prefer to just blame her, you know. <laughs> it's better to blame her than to blame me. Um, right. Uh, uh, okay. So... Yeah. yeah. It's a real shame that you can't come back in here once you've finished the level because it's really nice. I wish that you could like come back in and it would all be like done up. Got rid of all the cobwebs and the, you know, skeletons lying around the place. It's like that. It was all like done up and, and happy and bright and colourful and like full of people. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Right. So. Oh, there's some demons. Wonderful. Everybody loves demons. Right. <laughs> Everybody loves demons. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to use me, me freezing coating here. Um, so I've got freezing coating, but I've also... My my weapons are on fire. Hmm, do you think that cancels those two out? Maybe it does. I'll attack the archivist. I don't understand how the archivist has become a ranged demon. I mean, I understand he could be possessed if he was a mage. But how is he, like, literally morphed into a ra I don't understand. He would become an abomination, right? Wouldn't he? I don't want to start. Okay. I Morgan, I need your, um... I need you. I need you, Morgan. I need you. I need you to do a corner call, but I need you to be in a good enough position where you can actually get more than one of them. There we go. That'll do. Get those two. Marvellous. And then we'll attack the Archivist. The way to deal with these demons is their Fred. What could that possibly be? Do enlighten me. <laughs> uh, oh, there's another one. Hello. I didn't see you there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Mr. Demon. There you go. Hmm. Book is badly burned. You can make out a word here and there, and that is all. Okay, um, yeah, maybe there are other records. We can only hope. Okay. <clears throat> so be it. You have work meetings all day, Timothy. Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> just, just forget about it, man. Stay here with us, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't need work. What you need is a Dragon Age live stream. That's what you need. <laughs> um, I do. I can already talk. I've already done my work. Four o'clock this morning. I was in work. These bloody four o'clock starts are killing me off, you know. Uh, the trouble is, I'm not disciplined enough to go to bed at six o'clock every night. Even though I know I need to, but I'm just like, oh, I, let's stay up a bit later. That's the problem. Right, we'll head up here. Uh, <laughs> um, bills are awful things, Welsh friend. I agree with you. That's It's just wrong, isn't it? We shouldn't have to deal with this shit, should we? Just like, no, man. Um, okay. So, I'll have a creep up here. See if anything's gonna immediately jump out and attack us. All these cobwebs everywhere, but there's no spiders. Suspicious! Boys and girls, this isn't why we don't oh, no, do blood magic. <laughs> All of those people who are like, oh, blood magic isn't evil. Yeah, yes it is. This is why. That's a rage demon. It doesn't look like a rage demon, but okay. Um, oh, can anybody remember how this fight works? I think these wardens healing up, don't they? Uh, <laughs> um... um do the wardens heal him up? I can't remember. Should we all should we attack the wardens? Let's attack the wardens and see what happens. Because yeah, I think they're like healing him or something. So if we kill all of the wardens, Morrigan's leveled up. That was a poor time to level up Morrigan. I needed you to level up like five seconds before the battle, preferably. Uh, and then go and get that one. And then go and get that one. There we go. And then we can we can attack the rage demon. Uh, Morgan, if you could do a paralyze, please. Uh, ooh, that actually worked. And then do a death hex. And then do a misdirection hex. And then do a vulnerability hex. And then throw everything you've got at him. Uh, and we'll just keep stabbing him, really. Just keep stabbing him. And, uh, oh, there's a fireball. That's not good. And also all of his wardens are back alive. That's not good either. I mean, that was going well for about four seconds. Um, all right. Wait, everybody just chill. He's healed up, man. He's healed up. For heaven's sake. Um, okay, 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 okay. This is fine. This is fine. Everything is fine. Everything is wonderful. Everything is grand. Everything is dandy. Um, get rid of these bloody fire demon things. Rage demons, yes. Uh, Dora, you take a health potion. Morgan, I need your cone of cold and I need it over here, like now. And Al Alistair, you can take a health potion as well. We really do need more health potions, don't we? Um, Morgan, cone of cold. I think you're going to hit Dora. You might hit Dora. Oh, you didn't hit Dora. Well done. Well done. And then we'll get that rage demon down. <laughs> reading the chat. <laughs> um, okay, let's fight the wardens. Fight the wardens. Fight the wardens. 
And then fight the other warden. Okay, Morrigan's about to die. I'm too busy reading the chat, not paying attention. Right, okay, so. We can do it this time, guys. We can do it, I believe. You resisted my paralyze! Oh my god, that's not fair. Let's do a cone of cold. There. That's what we needed. Uh, Morrigan, we actually attacked the other thing. Jesus Christ. And then she's gonna die. She's gonna die. She's gonna die. Don't die! For heaven's sake. If I switch to Dora, it might start attacking Dora instead. Um, yay, down he goes. The warden summoned demons. Can't believe it. And my grand, she knew. The wardens don't forbid blood magic, anything it takes to win. She was fighting for her life with most press on, and for my own reasons, not for your soul searching. Yeah, she was fighting for her life, alright? I believed that my family was better than that. But answers may lay up ahead. See, here's the thing that I don't understand. Like, she was your great, great, great grandmother. You never knew her. You never met her. I mean, yeah, all right, she's your ancestor and everything, but she doesn't really have anything to do with you. I mean, like, I wouldn't take it personally that she did a bad thing. Like, it's not really got anything to do with you just because you're descended from her. I don't really see why it matters that much. Um, magic and real power. Oh, we can give her a specialization. We could go spirit healer and have two healers, which would be useful. We could go arcane warrior, but I don't really know how to play as arcane warrior. Um, we could go blood mage. I don't think I would ever use the blood magic, but the plus to constitution and spell power would be quite good. You know, Marigan is the only one who comments if you yourself become a blood mage. She's the only one who comments on it, and it's only in the last cutscene with her. Well, not the last cutscene with her, but like, um, when she's proposing the dark ritual to you. And uh, she sort of makes a comment about, I don't know, forbidden magic. Or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but I know she sort of hints that she knows you're a blood mage. Nobody else ever mentions it. Um... Well, apparently there was a, a conversation with Wynne that was cut from the final game where Wynne confronted you about being a blood mage and left the party if you used blood magic. Apparently that was a thing. Um, Spirit Healer says, Fred, yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. I just, it's not very Morrigan, is it? It's not very Morrigan to be a spirit healer. But having two group heals would be useful, so we'll go with that, I think. Plus to magic and minor combat health regeneration. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. And we will give her... Do we want to give her a repeal straight away? I don't want to give her something else. <sighs> give her sleep, which isn't very useful, but it's one step towards waking nightmare. Give her death magic, which is kind of useful, and it's one step towards curse of mortality. These are both good things. I think we'll do death magic. Uh, I give a healing, I don't need Wynne. I mean, I still kind of do need Wynne, because Wynne's got, like, other stuff going on. Which is sort of good. Um, and plus, it's like, it's just better to have both of them. Because, like, if Morrigan's using all of her magic on, like, attacky stuff, she can't also be stopping to heal everybody every five minutes. Like, Wynne will sometimes just, like, heal and use, re like, um, what's it called? Regenerate and stuff like that. She might heal someone and then regenerate someone and then there's a stamina one as well, isn't there? Rejuvenate someone and then maybe do a group heal. Like all one after the other. And during that time she's not actually attacking anybody. See what I mean? Whereas, um... Yes. So it's, and then, you know, you've got Morrigan stood in the background kind of, you know, carrying on to attack, continuing even to attack people. Um, see what I mean? I just think they work better together. It wins too weak on our own and Morrigan's too limited on our own. Um, so unless you're playing as a mage yourself, who can take one of the two roles, it's just kind of better to... Uh, is that an alluvian? That looks like an alluvian, doesn't it? Um, um, yes, what I was saying? I was saying something. 
Yes, they work better together. Unless you, unless you yourself are playing as a mage, you can take one of the two roles as either like an attacky mage or a healy mage. It's just always better to have both of them, I think. Anyway, let's head upstairs. Um, if Morrigan uses blood magic in the tower, when turns her into the, the Templars. Really? I didn't know that. Uh, anyway, um, um, uh, yes, attack these skeletons. I don't know how we're going to resolve this situation yet, you know? I haven't planned that far ahead. Down. There we go, and then we can just click on some raspberry jam because why not? All right, all right. <laughs> it's part of the history of Soldier's Peak. Should we have a read? Uh, after Astrive, that person's death, the rumours and theories became increasingly outlandish. One of the more ridiculous rumours told of a. What the hell is that? A Asturian's infatuation with an elven princess of law, whom he was trying to resurrect in a secret ritual chamber through the use of blood magic and the princess's favourite food, raspberry jam. Warden Commander Frida Halwick launched a thorough investigation in into Ast Ast Asturian's secret plans, uh, but was unable to uncover any evidence that anything in Soldier's Peak had been changed. Commander Halwick declared that the rumours about uh, Asturian were a slight on his memory and that anybody found repeating them would be harshly punished. The stories were thus silenced. <laughs> <laughs> but they keep a jar of raspberry jam around just to uh, remind everybody. Okay. We'll talk to Sophia, shall we? Let's uh, a quick save. <laughs> right, okay. So, head in. Hello, Sophia. Step no further, Warden. This one would speak with you. Um, we could just attack her. I feel like that would be Dora's response, to be honest. I don't think we would, like, waste time talking to her. Should we just attack her? I feel like we could just attack Should we just attack her? I'm gonna just attack. I'm just gonna attack her. Oh, why waste time talking to her? She's a demon. We just gonna attack her. There we go. That that saved us five minutes, didn't it? <laughs> and it means Levy doesn't get quite as much closure, but yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. All right. All right. All right. 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 Um. Do you know what I think we need? Do you know what I think we need right at this moment? I think we need a grenade. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm going to grenade those guys. There, those ones. I'm going to grenade them. We're going to probably get Alistair in it, aren't we? Oh, mm, mm, mm. Hmm, maybe we need to get Sophie kind of closer. Sophia even kind of closer to them. No, we can get all of them in that blast man. Get all of them in that blast man. I'm going to grenade them. There we go. That almost killed one of them. <laughs> Um, and that one's paralysed. Uh, hey, don't, don't, don't knock Dora on our ass. That wasn't very friendly. Uh, um, uh, there you go. And is Sophie the only one left? I think she might be. Um, quickly before she kills Morrigan. There we go. Uh, there we go! Everything dandy. I've never actually done that before, I don't think. I don't think I've ever just attacked her like that. So yeah, we didn't we didn't get to hear about Avernus or anything. <laughs> we missed most of the uh, the history of what's actually been going on, but that's alright, Avernus will tell where. Um, and we should get the Warden Commander Armour. Excellent. Can we put Alistair in it? Uh, where is he? Where's the Warden Commander Armour? Yes, you can. And it is better, isn't it? I think it must be, surely. Oh yeah, that's better. That's much better. And look at it, it's so sexy! 
is the sexiest armor in the game, and I think should he, he should have the shield, right? I have the shield, or do you get the shield? Oh, I think you get the shield in like the secret um thing. Yes, the secret huja that you unlock if you get all of the uh, bits of history. Um. Okay. Yes, I know the grenade was useful, Fred. I know you're right. Grenades are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, traps detected. Okay, nobody move. Nobody move. I need to go and disarm these traps. Uh, oh, she walked into the trap while going to disarm the trap. That's a new one. That's never happened before, I don't think. Uh, hello, Levy. Yeah, you just stand out in the open. Why not? Go and disarm these traps. Uh, mostly just because I want the experience more than anything else. Oh, should we use a grenade on those ones? I've only got two left. I don't know whether I want to use them. But uh, oh, it would be it would be nice. No, we've only got two left. We've only got two left, man. We want to uh, we want to save them, or do we? We could use one, couldn't we? Should we use one? Should we use the shock one? The shock one's pretty good. Should we use it? Okay. See what it does. Oh, that well, that was actually seriously good. That was really good. That was really good. Fred. How can you have never told me about these grenades and how good they are? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> you should have told me this ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh my god, guys, have you not killed these ones yet? Okay, okay. Everybody dead? Everything good? Okay, wonderful. Um, can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? <sighs> right. Okay, okay, we're heading to Avernus' tower. Here. Hello, skeletons! Blame me. <laughs> Get a warm welcome in these parts, don't you? Uh, <laughs> I love you just stands there. Look at him. <laughs> um, Sorry, I was laughing at Fred. <laughs> it's a piece of me. Sorry. Uh, Maybe giggle. It's a piece of me. Old research of the Major Furnus. Uh, they detail a series of experiments in terse clinical handwriting. Day 32. The subject is not responding to the stimuli. Testing the pain threshold has uncovered nothing. Only three subjects are left. Day 82. If only I could reproduce last night's extraordinary success. Electricity is only a catalyst. The blood is the key. Day 97. Energy and blood. Repeated applications have duplicated the results. I conjecture that success can be induced alchemically. But there are no more subjects left. If only I had one more or a dozen. The things I could do. Okay, uh, and then we've got a book, uh, Avernus's Notes, and then we've got Alchemical Concoction. <clears throat> the noxious potion appears to be the culmination of Avernus's horrific research. <laughs> oh, Fred, I'm sorry. <laughs> Drink the vial, destroy the vial, leave the vial. Oh, we're drinking the vial. We're definitely drinking the vial. Uh, pain racks your body, but there is power. Something, something, something. You have access to new abilities. Yay! 
Okay, uh, check out my new abilities. And you just get them, you don't need to spend points on them. So what about the rogue ones? I don't know what the rogue ones are. Tapping the power of tainted blood makes the rogue more nimble, able to move more quickly while using stealth and more likely to dodge physical attack. <gasps> and uh, the rogue's blood gushes forth, coating the edges of a weapon with a deadly taint. The character gains bonus to damage, uh, determined by the cunning attribute, but suffers continuous pain health in return. Okay, I don't know how useful they're going to be, but we'll pop them on the... I was going to say we'll pop them on the... Uh, Oh, but it doesn't seem to let me. Oh, it'll be able to help me put that one on. Is that one just a, uh, just a general? Yeah, it's a passive one. Okay. Um, right. So, drop a quick save game. <laughs> oh, Fred, <laughs> you crack me up, you do. Um, okay. Uh, there's a furnace over there. I hear you. Don't disrupt my concentration. Even now the demons seek to replenish their numbers. Are you to thank for this welcomed but temporary imbalance? Uh, yes I am. I know your crimes have heard us. You're a monster. Yeah, let's not say that. The old wooden mage, you're still alive? Only just. I have only a short time left. Why are you here? What is your intent? Um, I want some answers. I'm debating whether to let you live. I've seen your experiments. So to speak, must be rid of its plague of demons. Did you recover the Grey Warden space? Yeah, I'm here to recover the Grey Warden space. Hmm. An admirable goal. But in order to achieve this, the demons must be cut off forever. Um. Okay, Soldier's Peak must be rid of its plague of demons. Agreed. This must be the first priority. The only priority. Um, okay, I've seen your experiments. They were necessary. <coughs> any tool, any iota of information that could defeat the fell demons was justified. As a warden, you should know that. Necessary. Having to relieve yourself after an eight-hour ride is necessary. But there's no excuse for summoning demons. Mm. You love the way he says that. There's no excuse for summoning demons. Sounds like he's talking to a two-year-old. <laughs> now you go and sit on the naughty step and think about what you've done, Avernus. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, how do you know I'm a woman? A combination of my research and blood. But even without that, who else would brave soldiers peak? Uh, okay, I want some answers, old man. To what questions, I wonder? Ask. Uh, okay. So, yes. Uh, tell me about what happened. What use would storytelling serve? The tyrant Arland is long dead, as is all our noble co conspirators and the Grand Rebellion. Sophia's corpse may walk and talk, but she too is no more. That corpse does not walk and talk anymore. Um. Okay, so how was Arland a tyrant? He ruled with fear and poison. His treachery pit noble against noble in terrible battle. We thought him a monster. We gathered allies to rebel. But the toll of years has erased our failure, hasn't it? It seems so pressing then. But the kingdom lives on. Uh, what happened to the rebellion? Too many mouths to quiet. Even sorcery can only go so far. So we met with Tian Kuzland. With him on our side, we had a chance of victory. Instead, the King's Guard ambushed us. Commander Dryden and I barely escaped. Um, oh, you practice blood magic on the nobles. Of course, to nudge people to keep our secrets safe. Sophia should have let me nudge harder. Her scruples were her undoing. I don't think her scruples were her undoing. I think the demons that you summoned were her undoing. Um, yeah, you had to know that summoning so many demons was foolhardy. Perhaps, but it was survival for months. I prepared the summoning circles, researched the darkest depths of the Fade. That moment was a triumph of demonic law. Dozens of demons called by my hand. But... With so many variables, I suppose, calculation errors were inevitable. Ugh. I was so close. 
Uh, you're to blame for all of this. Some things you just don't do. Commander Dryden, you have the demons. So I'm proud of your actions. Um. Hmm. 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 I don't know. I I always struggle with what Dora would think of like magic-y stuff because she's obviously not going to be very well versed in it. Um. I mean, I don't think she'd be particularly thrilled about like all of the experiments and stuff. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, let's try and let's try and persuade him. From a warden, that means something. So tired, so old. Let me undo my greatest of mistakes. Let me cleanse this place. Then, then I will accept whatever justice you feel I'm owed. Okay, good. Um. So be it. My only request, if justice or vengeance drive you, stay your hand until the demons are dealt with. Okay, until the demons are dead, we are allies. That will do for now. We must go to the Great Hall. There, I will repair the damage I caused so long ago. There will be peril. The demons will fight us every step of the way. Come. Okay, we didn't get to ask him about his... Uh experiments and stuff because he says some interesting things that then kind of get ignored throughout the rest of the games about how there's power in blood magic and um no there's power in the taint is what he says if we finish that quest now uh yeah so we could be able to get the secret cash which is good um yeah there's like this power in the taint and the, the blood magic comes from demons but the taint is alien from them so they can't alien to them so they can't touch it so it kind of suggests that you can sort of have the power of blood magic without the influence of demons or something like that um which makes it seem a bit weird what the grey wardens do in inquisition doesn't it although they were being manipulated i suppose um oh he's got pits full of bones oh lovely and a giant statue of someone Great, wonderful, and lots of blood. Like really quite a lot of blood. And also also like a skull. <laughs> but not like a normal skull, like a, a skull with tentacles or something. Yeah. He's a creepy old dude, isn't he? And also a frog. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> um uh, Right, so, uh, I think that's everything. I'm going to be careful because I can't get back into this place once we've uh, left it. There's a Vernus just like, you know, slowly walking <laughs> across the bridge. Uh, oh, I've, I've still got my party on hold position. Um, why did I have them on hold position? Oh, I had them on hold position because I was doing these traps. Did I not take them on hold position after that? Oh, well. <laughs> um, right. We must act quickly. The demons are clawing on the gates. The veil must be closed. Okie dokie, what do I do? I will unravel the summoning circles I drew so long ago. Waves of spirits and demons may come through. Dispatch them. I will begin. First, I must summon the magical energies. I feel them. They're coming. Okay. <laughs> he can feel the magical energies. That's good. Um, <laughs> right, so... I need Morrigan with a cone of cold for these guys. Because they, you know, they don't like to be chilly. Um... Um, did I freeze Dora? I think I froze Dora. Oh dear, I froze Dora. That's unfortunate. That's okay, don't mind. It's fine, Dora. You'll be fine. Um, uh, and now we're all on fire. And that's good. That's fine. That's wonderful. Ah, uh, now there's going to be shades. 
Morgan, 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 Morgan. Take a healing potion. There we go. Everybody, attack that shade. Uh, and then, once he's down, attack that one. Um, keeping an eye on everybody's health. Um, I think I need to turn the sound down a bit. I turned it up during the conversation with the Vernus, so and now I can't hear myself talk. Um, attack that one. Alistair's about to die. We're not going to let Alistair die. We need Alistair, probably, for reasons. Um, uh, get you down, get you down. Okay. Furnace is doing his little mage dance. And we've got wraiths. I like wraiths. Uh, uh, we'll get down. Oh, we've got some wraith demons as well. Okay, well. Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, grenades. Yes, I know. But is there not like a, a bigger bad guy at the end? I've only got one grenade left. And is there not like a massive big bad guy at the end? I think it'd be better to use all men with frozen wind. <laughs> oh no, wind was the one keeping us alive. Um. Okay. Get you down. Ooh, everybody's health is getting a chance to regenerate. Yes, it's the uh, desire demon, that's right. Uh, are you on your own? Or are there more people coming? Are there more people coming? I'm going to let Morrigan do a bit of a uh, paralyze. And then a death hex. And then vulnerability hex. And... No, it seems to just be her. I'm not using a grenade just on one person. They're for groups of people, man. I'm not using one just on one person. Uh, that's not a good pose that we got her in there. <laughs> um, and down she goes. Is that it? Or is there more? Well, that might be it. Before we speak to Avernus, I want to go and get that cash. Just because I know that we can't get back in afterwards, so you know, I want to make sure I get it. Uh, you found an old painting, one dating back to Commander Asturian's times, perhaps Asturian's history pointed to this. It's like the Grey Warden Oath. And a little chest pops out for us. Uh, and where do we get the Grey Warden shield then? Tell me, Fred, tell me where we get it. Um, because if we don't get it there, and we don't get it, do we get it in a different quest or something? I can't remember. I know you can definitely, I know you can get it because I've had it, like, with the Grey Warden armor and everything. And then you're like, you know, you're the Warden Commander. Especially, like, it's especially cool in Awakening where you're actually the Warden Commander and you're wearing Warden Commander armor. It's the best thing. That is the best thing. Um. All right, all right. Uh, okay, hello, Venice. It's over. Veil is strong now. Stronger, at least. I said I'd submit to judgment. And so I shall. Can I be left to experiment in peace? No, you fucking can't. <laughs> um, um, uh, kill him for your crime's death is the only verdict. You must atone research ways to help the ones ethically. Um, get it after things move to Denimrim. Really? Huh, interesting. Uh, your punishment is to live with what you've done. I cast you up the wall and sleep you under a turn. I won't be your judge. I think I think Dora would kill him, you know. I think that's what she would do. Which I, I don't think I've ever killed a furnace, actually. Because I usually just let him experiment, either ethically or, like, I just let him carry on his experiments, however. Because I do think his research is important. But I think Dora would be like, no, we're just going to kill him. I think that's that's uh, that's what she would do. I think we're just going to kill him. You went too far, Avenus. Warden or not, blood magic is forbidden. <laughs> so it's chastising a two-year-old again. <laughs> um, <laughs> went too far. <laughs> um, oh dear. You've done it, Warden. Soldier's Peak is safe again. A good thing you took care of that Avernus. 
a blood mage in the wardens. Common folk should never hear of that. Some still distrust wardens, even in a blight. Crazy buggers. But there was no proof to redeem my family. Wait, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, you know, just be good now. It doesn't matter what your family did. They're not a reflection on you. I don't understand all of this kind of, oh, well, my ancestors did this, therefore. It's like, it doesn't matter. They don't have anything to do with you just because you're descended from that line. Like, who cares, man? Um, even if you have proofs of his actions were damning, the past would offer redemption. The future to try the future instead. Your grandmother, I'm not sure about, but you're a good man. Stop your belly aching. <laughs> do you know what, Levy? Stop your belly aching. Didn't mean to offend. You've done so much. I suppose the next question is, what next? You've got a whole fortress now. I suppose I should start plying my trade again. Uh, uh, where will you go, Levy? I might use the peak as a base of operations. So many bandits about. But none would dare come here. Nice place to store trade goods. You, of course, will get a sizable discount. Looks like we're done here. A demonic invasion thwarted, a warden base safely rescued. We do good work. We do do good work, Alistair. You're very adorable. Right, um, yeah, that's an alluvian, right? That looks like an alluvian. Or is it just like a thing? But it looks like an alluvian, right? <laughs> um, ooh, robes of Avernus. I believe are they a blood magic thing? I think they're a blood magic thing. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Robes of Avernus. Yeah, improved blood magic. They're actually not very good, to be honest. Plus three will tell, plus three armor. Um, uh, <laughs> Magpie, I agree with your point about ancestors, but Dora Bella as a dwarf wouldn't agree. I know, you see, I think she would. Because she's a castless dwarf. Which means her ancestors were criminals and now she's being punished for it. So she knows full well that punishing the descendants for the crimes of the ancestors is completely stupid. And that you shouldn't um, be, you know, uh, punished for things that your ancestors did. Because that's what's happening to her. The only reason she's a castless dwarf is because one of her ancestors was probably a... Uh, um, a criminal or several of her ancestors and I mean you know she ended up being a criminal as well but only because of where she was forced to live because of the crimes of her ancestors so like sure a noble dwarf would probably um, take that point of view if you're playing as a noble dwarf but I don't think a common dwarf would I think a common dwarf would be like yeah we shouldn't like hold you know uh, the crimes of people an people's ancestors against them because that's stupid um so, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going to head back out and just make sure we haven't missed anything because we can't get back in afterwards. For reasons of stupidness. <laughs> really annoys me that you can't get back in because it's such a cool little place. Uh, quick scare bear. Okay, head back outside. And then we can come back later and Levy will have the place set up and I'll be in the storage chest and everything. <sighs> we haven't um we haven't got the uh star metal yet, have we, for um star fang. Hmm. Sometimes you don't get it, you know, sometimes you go the whole game and you never encounter it. It's very sad. Gather your party and venture forth. Uh, where should we go? Should we go back to camp? Let's head back to camp. Might have a few more chats with people. I'm feeling a bit like winding down. I know we're a bit earlier than normal, but you know, I do have a bad throat, so. Talk to the doggy. Hello, doggy. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. 
Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Okay, don't listen to Alistair, he's full of rubbish. If you had it and you didn't know it was probably tasty, I'd never feed you another human being. Um, yeah, if you've had it and you didn't know it, it was probably tasty. <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll sort inventory out. I don't think we've got much to sort out, really. No, we didn't pick up any presents or anything. What Shadow Belt? Melee critical chance and reduces hostility. Ooh, is that better than Constitution for Dora? Maybe. Um. Um. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I got the antique walking warden crossbow, but I never use crossbows, so you know. Oh dear. Um. Um. Sorry, I'm just kind of like the. Uh, um. Uh, 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 I'm trying to work out who to give shadow belt to. That's what I'm doing. I mean, we're not, no, no, not Liliana with melee critical chance because she doesn't use melee. It's either going to be me or Zevran, isn't it? Plus two dexterity is definitely better. Uh, I think that's better than plus one constitution, to be honest. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me what to do, people. Um, I've got Winter's Breath. We could give that to somebody. 25% uh, cold resistance, 15% cold damage from radiates cold. Uh, that sounds like a Morrigan type thing to be honest because she's got more cold things. Okay, and then she's got 25% cold resistance as well, plus we spell, spell power, plus 10% cold damage. Hers is better. Hers is definitely better. Also, they're both called the same name, but one has a space and an apostrophe and the other one doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I've also got Asturian's Might. Is that better than anything? I think that's actually better than what Alistair's got on. We'll give him that and then we'll... Uh, we'll <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, I'm just looking at my cat. She's messing around behind the, uh, behind the blind. Um... And we'll give him some better, um, some better enchantments. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. I will, I will stop making sense in a minute. Uh, do, 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 do. I want some enchanting done. Enchantment. And we take those off of there. And we'll put them on Sturian's Might. Can anybody remember what they were? I'm sure, I'm assuming Expert Paralyze and... Ooh, we've got Master Cold Iron, which is versus Undead, which is not very useful. Um, we'll put Paralyze on. Excellent, eh? And actually, I was just having a look. I can't use that, can I know because I don't have high enough strength. Okay, never mind then. Um, I'm sure either my boy or I can help you out. Uh, I'm sure you'll be pleased with the good of my boy and... Whoa. Um, <laughs> sorry, I really... I realise I'm making less sense than normal, but yeah. Don't mind me, I just need to sell all my shit. Sell my shit, we'll keep Major's Eye, we'll sell the crossbow because I won't use it. Sell the bolts. I said sell the bolts, we'll sell Winner's Breath because I'm not going to give it to anybody. Uh, sell most of this shit. Um, do we keep the Templar armor? I don't think we're going to use the Templar armor for anybody. Uh, should we sell Eamon's shield? That feels like sacrilege, but why not? Ropes of Avernus, I'm not going to give to anybody. I don't think I'm going to give Shadow Belt to anyone. And we'll get rid of the Silver Ring. And... I think that's us. Um... Okay, okay. I think we're going to wind down. Maybe wrap things up there. Uh... I might have a little turn around the camp and have a few more chats with people because I think we've got some uh, 
some bonuses from all those gifts that we gave out. So we'll do that and then we'll call it a day. Um, keep the Templar armor for fighting Gaxkag. It's too late for it. I've, I've, I've got rid of it, man. I'd forget by the time we go. <laughs> by the time we. Um, we uh, we uh, we got to that point. How do you do quick sell? I think you double click. Hang on, I'll give it a go because I can't I can't remember. I'm just so used to doing sure it. Uh, see your whiz. I'll sell something. I'll sell a uh, what should I sell? I'll sell sell a lesser spirit bomb. Yeah, you double click. That's how you do it. Um, uh, hello, Zeverin. We'll have a chat with you. I've a question. Ooh, exciting. Go ahead. <laughs> you may not. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Um, does your oath expire? Why would I want to do anything with you? Is this after I ravish you in celebration? You could go if you wanted. Um... Thing is, I don't want to be too flirty with him. Because sometimes I feel like if you're too flirty with him, you actually scare him off. It's weird. Like, it's really weird romance with Severin. Because, like, if you go really hard flirty with him, you can sleep with him, fine. But then he seems to, like, freak out a bit and starts to back off. And it's actually hard to, like, get close to him, like, you know, emotionally. Which I suppose does um, fit his character. But... I, I, I've, I, there's just been a few times where I've done this Evan romance and you get you get to like you know the intimate bit and then it just never goes any further than that and he, he gets he gets really kind of cagey and it's just kind of hard to get him to open up um, so I don't know you could go if you wanted Zev could I and what if I didn't wish to leave uh, why wouldn't you go if you had the chance I was always a useful two for a handsome elf I could use a friend I really care where you go um, let's go option two. I'm sure I could come up with a few more if pressed. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? Okay. Ooh, plus 11 approval. He loves me, doesn't he? What we going to do? Care. He cares about me. Guys, he cares about me. Oh, that's sweet. Probably. Um, I've literally never taken him out on any, like, quest at all. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Liliana. Something I can help. Uh, do, do, do. I'd like to ask you something. Yes. What's on your mind? Uh, why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother stabbed an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle. And did not set foot in Ferald until much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Uh, was she not happy in Orlay? She wasn't unhappy. We had a good life, and she liked Orlay well enough. I loved it though. Valroyo was so vibrant, colourful. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecilie let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then. And she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecilie than my mother. Um. Okay, yes. Do you remember nothing of your mother? Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dry flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white ferelled and wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orlay. But enough about that. Let us move on. <laughs> okay, so we finally got that conversation with which we can finally give her a drastic grace. Get it out of my inventory. I mean, we could have given it to her anyway, but, you know, it just makes more sense if you give it to her after the conversation. Mm, flowers? Oh, thank you. They're very pretty. Uh, yes, they're your mother's flowers, aren't they? These were her favourite. I haven't seen these in such a long time. They smell just like mother used to. Thank you. Thank you so much for remembering. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, we got loads of approval from her as well. We're not accidentally in romance with her, are we? No, we're not warm. Good. 
<laughs> just so easy to accidentally romance people. Um, have a chat with Alistair. What do you need? Ask away. Um. Yeah, why did you keep your birthright a secret? You never asked. Yeah, true. Um, do you want to make me more angry? No, no, calm down. I'm not trying to make you more upset. I. Oh, let me explain. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then after the battle, when I should have told you, I don't know, it seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? Uh, how about, by the way, I'm the heir to the throne? Yeah. And, you know, the king was dead. It was pertinent information. You literally are the heir to the throne. Yes, well, I suppose part of me kind of liked you not knowing. Uh, okay, why? What happens when people find out? They treat me differently. I become the bastard prince to them instead of just Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shaped my entire life. I never wanted it. I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. Yeah. See, the trouble is, we... Everybody is, like, a product of what they're born into. You know what I mean? Like, everybody just... I mean, not, not everybody's, like, the heir to the throne. But everybody, to some extent, has the kind of, this is what you're born into. And it... it shapes you in some form or another there's always like in some way you can't escape it you know what i mean um so you know um uh you probably don't have a choice in the matter it doesn't sound stupid at all you don't want to be king why not that sounds incredibly whiny else <laughs> um okay it doesn't sound stupid i think dora would understand wait i don't know would dora understand i mean she would understand what it's like being born into something that shapes your entire life and you never wanted. It's just for her, it was being castless in dust town and for him, it's being the edge of the throne. <laughs> you know, <laughs> growing up in a noble a noble estate and everything like that. Um, <laughs> Let's ask him why he doesn't want to be king. Hello, have you met me? I'm no leader of men. I don't want to be the person sitting on the throne and making decisions that affect the lives of others. That it just isn't me. And now our Lehman plans to put me forward as the heir. It never ends, does it? For what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. I, I guess I was just hoping that you would like me for who I am. It was a dumb thing to do. Alright, apologies accepted. Like you for who you are, you're kidding, right? Don't worry about it, Alistair, don't have done. Yeah, do you know what, Alistair? Don't worry about it. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. Okay. Oh, we got disapproval. I need to get his approval up because I need to trigger his quest so that we can go and meet his sister so that I can harden him so that he can actually become a decent king. Um, Because I think, I think, I'll have to check my notes because I've got it all planned out, but I think we are making Alistair king in this playthrough. But... Dora's going to harden him, um, because if you harden him during his main quest, firstly, he actually, like, steps up to the responsibility a bit more and stops whinging quite as much. And secondly, um, he becomes a better king. Uh, a hardened Alistair is a better king than a softened Alistair. We'll go and have a chat with Shale. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're still with me, I see. Or oh, I have some questions. Yeah, I have some questions. It doesn't have better things to do. Um, <laughs> how did you end up at Honleith, my dear? Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the Mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum, snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> yeah, I would have thought you'd enjoy scaring humans. Oh, why weren't you? Why were you out in front of the tower? Didn't like this Wilhelm, I take it. Now, I thought, um, 
I'm gonna have to reread the first the the first one of the books, Stolen Throne, because I had it in my head that Wilhelm was in that book and was the mage that fought with one side. I can't remember which side. But there's a mage and he has a golem with him and he, I, I'm sure this is a thing. That there's a mage and he has a golem with him and he fights on one side. I can't remember whether he fights with the Orlesians or the Ferelden's. Like, probably the Ferelden's, I think, maybe. Anyway, and he's like a bit creepy and he's got this golem with him and the golem is shale. And I'm sure that was a thing that I remember. But then I looked it up in the wiki to like double check. And the wiki doesn't make any mention, that, like the wiki entry on Wilhelm doesn't make any mention of the fact that he's in Stolen Throne with Shale. But I'm sure that's a thing, so I'm going to have to reread the book. Because um, I was going to mention it in one of my videos, and then I thought, I better actually double check that I'm right about it. So I googled it, and there was no mention of it, and I was like, mm, maybe I was wrong. Um, anyway. Um, um, uh, yes, he didn't like this, Wilhelm. He did love using that control rod fondled it so much his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Um. <laughs> oh yes, a fortune. Yes, absolutely. Good. Clearly, I am worth it. <laughs> uh, you're worth it, Shale. <laughs> um, uh, it's L'Oreal, isn't it? L'Oreal, because you're worth it. Something like that. Um, um, yes, do you remember anything before, Hundley? I travelled with the mage. He did a lot of travelling, I remember that. But where we went, it is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. Okay, and how old are you? I have no idea. Wilhelm used to brag that the dwarves stopped making golems centuries ago. I do not age as you soft creatures do. Sadly, my memory is no better. Plus, I get bored and stop paying attention. Yeah, much like me. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, why were you out in front of the tower? That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Huh. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. <laughs> Guess he didn't like his wife either. I was once larger, ten feet tall. Then the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down. Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. Which is why Shayla is so adorable and dinky. Uh, yes, how do you shrink a golem? With a chisel. And a lot of nerve. <laughs> um, I would have thought that you'd enjoy scaring humans. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste. And then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. I love Shale. Good. <laughs> I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I like chats. Oh, we got approval. Shale likes me too. Everybody likes me, guys. I want to talk to Sten. I feel like conversations with Sten are a bit of a minefield. But we could give it a go. Are not quite as callow as I thought. That is unexpected. Okay, you thought I was callow. You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it eventually. Okay, you are very tall. Like Dora Bella is going to get one hell of a crick into her neck talking to you. Um. Okay. Why did you come to Ferelden? I was sent to be the eyes of the Antom. The Arishok asked, "What is the blight?" By his curiosity. Here. Okay, what's an Arashok? The one who commands the Antam, the body of the Kunari. Um, so he's your king? Kunari have no kings. Okay, what do you have then? 
little patience for endless questions. Fair enough. Um, don't you have to report back? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I can see her right on top of that. I cannot go home. Okay, why not? It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Okay, let's go. As you wish. See what I mean? Oh, I got six disapproval for that. Like, what the fuck? Jesus Christ, Stan, you're, you're just so difficult, man. I just need to find some more paintings to give him, I think. Um, I think that'll do us for now, actually. I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think that'll do us. We've been going, what, like, well, we've been going nearly three hours. Doing pretty well. Um, the key to winning over Sten is to ask questions that don't conflict with what he just said. Yeah, I know, but, like, doing that while role-playing Dora Bella is a bit hard. <laughs> I think those two maybe just aren't destined to get along. Um, that's all right. Like, not doing his personal quest isn't really that much of a loss. And you don't really need his approval for anything, like, towards the end game, particularly. Um, so, I think we'll wrap things up there. Next time, what have we got left? We've got Orzammar and we've got the elves. I think we'll do Orzammar last. Because I feel like Dorabella would be put off, putting off going back, wouldn't she? So, we might do the elves next time. There are some side quests that we need to do. But they're all a bit kind of scattered and all over the place. So, I think we'll do the elves and then we'll do Orzammar. And then when we head to Denerim, we'll finish up all of like the side quests and stuff at that point. Um, we're getting through the game pretty quick, actually. Um, although there is still quite a bit left to do. But uh, yeah, I reckon we'll probably do the elves next. Uh, we need to do Ostagar at some point as well, but I, I tend to do that after I've recruited everybody. Um, I don't know why, I just like to leave it to last. We also need to go and kill Flemeth, don't we? I keep forgetting about that. Um, uh, yes, so, we'll hold it off there. Um, and next time we'll go and do the elves. And it will be on Saturday, and it will be at 1.30 GMT, as normal. Um, yeah, that's it, kind of. I've, kind of, I've, I've <laughs> run out of things to say. Um, um, I always wonder why there's a hole here. Is, oh, is that meant to be like our latrine? That might be, yeah, our, like, you know. Yeah, because, you know, we don't have, like... <laughs> we don't have, like, plumbing, do we? <laughs> that's what that might be. Either that or it's a hold the dog's jug. But, you know, there's definitely, like, stuff down there. Um, <laughs> be a hell of a yeah. attention to detail, if that's the answer. Um, okay, right, yes. Yeah, so, I shall leave you with... What shall I leave you with? I left you with the moon last time, didn't I? I can leave you with the moon again, or I can leave you with, like... Oh, I don't know, there's some cheese. I'll leave you with that. I'm going to leave you with a view of this cheese. That's what I'm going to leave you with. And I shall see you again on Saturday, my lovelies.